Warzone Studio was kind enough to send out a couple of their battle mitts for us to review, and I have to say you guys, I absolutely love them. The mats we received have the kill team layout on them, making it quicker and easier to place objectives and terrain pieces to create a good play experience. The mousepad material the mats are made from is an upgrade from the foldable cardstock boards that you are used to seeing come in kill team boxes. So make sure to check them out and thank you to Warzone Studio for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody and welcome back to Command Point. Ave Dominus Nox. The Night Lords are here, Shane. I've been here. anxiously awaiting the arrival of this kill team for I can't even say how long. Um, but uh, they are here, and they are, they are coming to kill team tables near you soon. So I just want to dive in, Shane. Let's just I'm dive really into excited this. about this. Ryan, is this, could, it be, could it be the resurgence of elites that everybody's waiting for? Our Ooh, hero, I, our elite heroes. I think it could be. Come to save us from the, the anti-elite meta. So... <laughs> Uh, to get started here, um, we have archetypes, infiltration, recon, seek and destroy, same as the uh, the Mandrake half of this box, which by the way, if you want to check out our Mandrake review, that's out right now at the same time as this one. Uh, go check it out. But if you're here for Nemesis Claw, you're in the right place. Um, so it's an elite team. It's six models. This is what we've come to expect. You have your Night Lord Visionary, who is your leader. Um, he has quite a few loadout selections: bolt pistol, power weapon, bolt pistol, bolt pistol, power maul, bolt pistol, power fist, or plasma pistol. Nostrum chain blade. Ryan, no before even looking, no strom and chain blade. No Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, and uh, I think the you know, I'm just, spoiler alert: plasma pistol is pretty good. I don't know if people know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then you yeah. pick five guys from the list of uh, you have the fearmonger, a gunner, a heavy gunner, screecher, skin thief, ventrilocar, or just a basic warrior. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have the uh, a very unique ability, Ryan. Uh, do you want to tell us about it? Yes. So they have in midnight clad. Uh, when determining if a friendly Nemesis Claw operative is in an enemy operative's line of sight, that friendly operative is obscured if all of the following are true. It has a conceal order. It's within one of heavy or light terrain and or any part of its base is underneath the vantage point. And it's more than six from enemy operatives it's visible to. Yeah, so, so I mean, basically, if your opponent does not ignore obscuring in any way, uh, this is really, really helpful for just staying safe in your deployment zone. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. I've definitely played games against teams where it's like, where do I deploy and how do I get objectives uh, without getting shot? Yeah. And this team has an answer to that against mm -hmm. uh, certain stuff. Yeah. This team actually uh, today got a lot better against Vetguard, the new balance oh. data slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because good that point, spotter's ability got changed. So, yeah. Very yeah. cool. All right. Do we want to go and go right to the operatives now? Yes. So we'll start off here with the Night Lord's Visionary. So uh, it's got a uh, three up save, 13 wounds. We've talked about the, uh, we'll focus on the plasma pistol loadout because that's probably the best one. Uh, yeah. So plasma pistol, it's the same as any other plasma pistol. Four attacks on twos, five, six, AP one, or if you supercharge, it goes AP two and hot. Well, not any other plasma pistol, but yeah, any other twos. amazing plasma yes. pistol because it hits on twos. Yeah, so uh, we love that. We love that. Uh, and then and, the Nostrum yeah. and Chain Blade, uh, five attacks on twos, damage four, five with rending. Um, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, usually you have to, these days, you have to give up a good melee weapon in order to get the plasma pistol, but that is a good melee weapon. Yeah, I think it's, it's not good as, enough. Yeah. yeah, it's not as good as a power weapon, mm -mm. but um, it's pretty close, uh, and it's it's definitely going to be good enough. To, yeah. I mean, you want a plasma pistol that hits on twos. That's just amazing. Yeah. Um. So this model has... Three different abilities, really kind of like uh, two that chain off the, the first one. But So uh, this model has prescience. So once in each strategy phase, when it's your turn to use a strategic ploy or pass, you can use this ability instead. If you do so, add D3 prescience tokens to your pool. 
Your prescience tokens are spent on abilities and unique actions on this data card, but you cannot spend them if this operative is not in your kill zone. Uh, so uh, we have foreboding. Uh, in the fire fade phase, when it's your turn to activate a ready friendly operative, you can discard one of your prescience tokens to skip that activation. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then we have portent. Uh, once per turning point, when this operative fights in combat or a shooting attack is made against it, at the start of resolve hit successful hit step of that combat or shooting attack, you can discard one of your prescience tokens to discard one of your opponent's successful hits. Oh my goodness. Is that just a scratch? Is that just a scratch, but better? Yeah, now it's better. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it only works on the leader, though. The leader, mm -hmm. no other operative can do this, but oh my god. Yeah. Did you just get rid of a hit? Um, <laughs> really good. Uh, worth noting, it doesn't say anywhere that the prescience tokens have to be spent in that turn. So turn one, you may not need to be spending your prescience tokens. So to, by turn two, you could have, you might have racked up five to six, possibly, or four to six. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I will say foreboding. I've played a lot of elites at this point. I don't think that foreboding is going to be very useful. Against um, most matchups, yeah, it's not going to. Because you're going to be out activated okay. by a wide margin anyway. Skipping an activation on your end probably isn't going to do much. Yeah. Some teams, you know, there's not a lot of seven model teams out there. So, I mean, that would be a really useful time for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, alas, it is not. Um, against other elites, absolutely. In the mirror match. Go for it. For sure. Yeah. Against Legionary or Phobos or Intercession or Strike Force Justian. Uh, yeah, go for it. And Ryan, can you talk to us about the action over there? Yeah, so we have Premonition for 1 AP. This is a psychic action. Discard one of your Prescience tokens to gain one command point. That's pretty cool. I love that. And this team, we're going to get to it later, this team spends command points really well. Mm-hmm. So great leader, passing grade, absolutely. I oh, love for him. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Fearmonger now. So the Fearmonger is your basic Marine chassis, 12 wounds, 3 up save, 3 APL. He has a scoped bolt pistol, which is basically a bolt gun with a 6-inch range lethal 5 profile on the side. And then it's got a Terror Chem Vial, which is a 6-inch uh, range shooting attack, 5 shots on 3s, damage 2-0, it's got Mortal Wounds 3. Um, blast, Circle, Indirect, Limited, No Cover. Uh, and it's got the Terror Chem ability. Uh, and then the Tainted Blade is 5 attacks on 3s, 3-5, three, also with the Terror Chem critical ability. So Terror Chem, uh, basically each time that this operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack with this weapon and the Resolve successful hit step of that combat or shooting attack, the first time you resolve a critical hit, it must be a strike in combat, um, yeah, critical, yeah. The enemy operative gains one of your terror chem tokens until the end of the battle if it doesn't already have one. So terror chem poison. In the ready operative step of each initiative phase, enemy operatives with a terror chem token suffer D3 mortal wounds, roll separately for each, uh, even if this guy is no longer alive. So if he died and got incapacitated, the terror chem tokens stick around. This is okay. Um, it's not amazing. But, uh, I mean, that Terra Chem Vial is basically a five-shot frag grenade with... It's a little better, because Mortal Wound 3 instead of Crit Damage 3. Yeah. Um, it's got no cover as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Ideally, like, you know, I'd rather just kill things than poison them and have them take damage later. Yeah. But that's just me. Uh, he's got one AP action called Poison Objective. So select an objective marker that he controls that doesn't have a Terra Chem token. It gains a, a Terra Chem token, and then the first time an enemy operative without one moves within circle of it, it suffers D3 mortals right away, and then it gets a Terra Chem token until the end of the battle, which means it'll suffer D3 mortals later. So that is better than the weapon, the yeah, critical hit rule. That, that's I think. the reason to take this model, I think. I would 100% agree, because without that, this model doesn't seem very good to me. No. Um having him on capture specifically run up onto a midboard objective and poison it can be kind of a boon for your opponent a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, what do we have next? We got we have a gunner. 
Hey, we love gunners. It's got a Melta, a Flamer, and a Plasma. Is there anything more to say? Nope, moving on. (laughs) Uh, Heavy gunner. Hey, it's got a heavy bolster and a missile launcher. It does not have the Reaper Chain Cannon, because that's not legionary. Yep. Which which is a shame, because that's my favorite weapon. Yeah. Um, But hey, uh, heavy bolter's decent. It's okay. Yep. A missile launcher is... I don't really like the missile launcher, I'll be honest. It's been around for a while. I don't love it. Um, and I don't think I will be taking the heavy gunner on this team very often. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But it is yeah. there. Some teams you want to lean heavier into shooting, like Cast Cult. Mm-hmm. Take a heavy gunner there. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Ryan, the Screecher. Yes. Yeah, the Screecher. So <laughs> uh, he's got a pair of Lightning Claws. So five attacks, hitting on threes, damage four or five with lethal five and relentless. Um. For his abilities, he's got Screecher. While this operative is within three of an enemy operative, worse than the ballistic skill and weapon skill characteristic of that enemy operative's weapons by one, this is not cumulative with being injured. Uh, he also has Appetite for Cruelty, so each time this operative fights in combat as the active operative, if the target has less than its starting number of wounds remaining at the start of that combat, this operative's Lightning Claws gain the lethal four, a special rule for that combat instead of lethal five so it's like a, a win more in close combat yeah maybe like poisoned guys or something that mm-hmm. took mortals from that you can finish them off but honestly i don't think this guy against most things is not going to have a ton of issues finishing off models but i think if you're fighting in like another marine or something that's taken some chip then yeah it could be really good yeah uh yeah really good i think that guy's an auto take for sure. Just because of the Screecher ability? Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, the, he can take a crack grenade. I assume this team has crack grenades. I, I don't actually know for sure. They I think must. they do. Let me peek at the. Yes, <laughs> they do have crack grenades. Oh, there you go. You can give him a crack grenade if you want to shoot with him. Mm-hmm. So he has something to do with the. If he charge fights, kill something. Uh, Skin Thief Ryan, that's the next guy. This is my favorite guy on the team. So I'm really excited about him. Yeah. He's um, cool. I base... just finished building him last night. Oh, did you? Yeah. So uh, he's got the basic marine chassis, and he's got a bolt pistol, and he has a, let me see if I got it right this time, a Nostraman chain glaive. There it is. There it is. Uh, And it is five attacks on threes, four, six, reap one, and rending. So pretty good. Um, He has two abilities here. The first is flay them alive. So once per turn, when it kills a guy in its engagement range, you can select another enemy operative visible to and within six inches of him or the incapacitated operative. And until the start of the next turning point, they cannot perform mission actions. They cannot do the pickup action. They cannot control objective markers. So this is an ability we've seen before with the Crimson Duelist from Hand of the Archon. Yep. And let me tell you, it is really, really good. Um, because, like, let's say you win initiative and you're on loot or something and they have you're in range you're in charge range of like a basic trooper on an objective but you're also in charge range of like a melta or something that you really want to kill but it's not on an objective you can charge the melta kill him and if he's within six of that trooper you can stop that trooper from looting the point so you're not like giving up the loot necessarily yeah the primary point by taking out the operative that is actually more important to to get rid of so i love that ability um and then also the second rule on this guy's card, Tyrant of the Skinning Pits. Each time he fights in combat, subtract one from both damage characteristics of the enemy operator's weapons for that combat to a minimum of two. So he just has damage reduction. Um, I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't work in shooting. It's only in melee, but still awesome. Just yeah. so good. Yeah. I like this guy a lot, mm-hmm. and I like his weapon, and he looks cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Night Lord Ventrilocar. Uh, he's got a bolt pistol and a chain sword, um, but really what we want to talk about here is he counts as an icon bearer. So uh, he counts as having an APL higher when it comes to controlling objective markers. Uh, and then we have his disconcerting mimicry for 1 AP. It's a psychic action. Select one enemy operative within six of this operative, then select one of the following for that enemy operative. You can only select each one once per battle. 
Uh, you can subtract one from its APL. You can change its order. Ooh, that's so good. Uh, you can perform a free dash action with it and specify the location for your opponent to move it to. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a problem. Dash. This is going to be a problem in like tournaments. Because it's like, yeah, oh, I want you to move you. your model there. No, right there. That spot. That spot right there. Um, this operative cannot perform this action while within engagement range of an enemy operative, of course. Um, yeah, no, it's a cool model that... The perform a free dash action, Shane, you, you were going to say something about that? That's so good. Mm -hmm. You like, can move somebody off an objective. You can move them off an objective. You can move them outside of cover. So, like, you don't necessarily need to change their order if you walk them out into the open. Mm -hmm. um, you can... Uh, I don't know. You can just do so much with that, I feel. Um, it's just really good. Yeah. Uh, it's a little awkward because you have to be within six of them. And ideally, you want to do it to a guy that's not ready so they don't just move back. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I mean, I think that there is something to be said for like being able to do that. And at worst, without all that stuff, he's an icon bearer with a chainsword. Five attacks on threes, four, five. So probably a good model. Yeah. Just generically speaking. Um, speaking of generic, we have the Night Lord Warrior, yep. who, unlike the Mandrake Warrior that we talked about in the other video, does not have anything special going on. He's just a guy. He's a space marine. He's special enough. Yep. You yep. will not take him. So <laughs> uh, let's go up to the strat ploys, Ryan. Uh, I want to start with Nightmare Manifest for one CP. Basically, this is fight twice and shoot twice wrapped up into one neat little ploy, which is kind of great. Um, the shoot twice still, it, it does specify that uh, a bolt weapon needs to be selected for at least one of the attacks. So you can hypothetically throw a crack grenade and shoot a bolt pistol mm -hmm. or something. Or, you know, you can double shoot your heavy bolter. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I think that's really good. Uh, I don't think it's an every turn type of thing. I think it's more of a, do you have initiative and do you see a play with initiative your first go where you, you're going to actually make use of this? If so, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so next up here for strategic plays, we have, we have come for you. Until the end of the turning point, each time a friendly Nemesis Claw operative is activated, if the first action it performs during that activation is the charge action, after it finishes that action, you can select one enemy operative within within its engagement range to suffer D3 mortal wounds. So I like this a lot because this team has a lot of like crit damage five, which doesn't ever one shot anything. Yeah. If you're playing against like seven wound chassis, you can take this and a lot of the time your crit damage five is going to be enough to one shot that model. Mm -hmm. um, granted, you have to weigh the fact that against like you know, guardsmen or pathfinders that are seven wounds, you probably don't need any extra help killing them. So it, I think it really depends on the um, the wound breakpoints. If you're fighting another Marine, if you get two on that D3, then they're not a 10 wounds, which is probably a much better breakpoint for you than 12 wounds. Yeah. Um, it can knock models into like a, you know, you hit them twice and kill them instead of needing to hit them three times. So I like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Prey Sight for 1 CP. Until the end of the turning point, when determining line of sight for each friendly Nemesis Call operative, enemy operatives within 6 inches of it are treated as having an engage order unless they are in cover from heavy terrain. So it's kind of like every gun gets indirect <laughs> if yeah. they're not in heavy. Yeah. Melt a gun? Mm, I like um, that. It's a little bit niche, though, because a lot of the time you can just move dash shoot and get within two inches. But in the event that you're actually too far to do that, Prey Sight will be good. It's just super situational that I don't know if I can recommend actually taking it. Um, but this is OK, because we have more ploys coming. So, Ryan, um, this next one I don't think is good. But can you read the the Black Hunt? Until the end of the turning point, each time a friendly Nemesis Claw operative fights in combat with or makes a shooting attack uh, against an enemy operative that has less 
then it's starting number of wounds remaining at the start of the combat or shooting attack. In the roll attack dice step of that combat or shooting attack, you can reroll one of your attack dice. It's all that just to say if you're fighting a wounded guy, you get a reroll, basically. Yeah. This um, team really likes uh, fighting wounded guys. Yeah, and what's great is that they like fighting wounded guys without needing to spend CP on it, so just don't pay for this. Um, let's get into the tactical ploys, which is this team has some of the best tactical ploys I think I've ever seen on a team, like the best set. Um, I So I'm going to skip one, Ryan, because I want to read this one specifically, and then you can go back to Out of the Darkness. I want to read Vox Scream, because this might be one of my favorite tactical ploys in the whole game. Sure. Um, so it's one plus CP, meaning each time you use it, it's going to cost more than the first time. Um, one more than the first time. So the second time you use it, it costs two. Third time is three, so on and so forth. Uh, use this tactical ploy when your opponent would activate an enemy operative. Your opponent cannot activate that operative in this activation. If there are no other operatives eligible to be activated, this tactical ploy has no effect. And uh, yeah, it costs one more. So this is so good. I mean, it's so, so good. Um, I don't even know, like, how to describe how good Vox Scream is. I don't care that it costs two the second time I use it. Yeah. I'm not sure if I care that it costs three the third time I use it. <laughs> I think I'm going to try to use this twice a game, maybe three times a game. Um, this is, but the best part is you're not going to, you're probably not going to need to use it more than once or twice a game because this is, if you lose an issue, first of all, you don't need to use a turn one, probably. Um, you can, maybe, but probably not necessary. Uh, turn two, though, if you lose initiative, uh, your opponent is going to have probably one way to hurt you. Maybe more than one, but you've got some tanky guys that they might not want to hurt. Um, you just Vox Scream, and then they don't go with that guy. And then they have to go with a bad play, and then you basically get to go next and stop that play from happening. And it's almost like you won initiative. And then if you do win initiative... You go and do something, and then they try to hit you back on the other side of the board. Nope, you Vox Scream. And then you're, you're going to take over two sides of the board just based off that alone. And it's not like other teams are going to have better threat ranges than you most of the time because this is a three APL team. So there are insane asymmetric threats being established by this ploy. Um, I think it's really, really good. And I know some people are going to say, oh, it's going to cost two CP the second time you use it. Guys, remember, first of all, we just went over the strat ploys. I don't know about you guys, but nothing is blowing my mind on that side of the page. I'm okay with not using most of them most of the time. And if you also remember Prescience, the leader, those Prescience tokens, yep. he can pay an APL to gain a CP for one of those Prescience tokens. So you have ways to generate command points. You don't have amazing strategic ploys that you need to pay for. I am saying that you can use Vox Scream liberally, okay? Because this ploy is incredible. This is, I think, the best thing on this team. So uh, anything to add, Ryan? No, I think you covered everything regarding that tech up. Do you want to never get shot by, yeah, do you want to never get shot by a Meltagun? I love you, this, not this getting team, shot by Meltaguns, as a matter of fact. Nemesis Claw, you will never get shot by a Meltagun. I promise you. You you <laughs> don't need to let that happen to you ever. So there you go. Uh, so the first first uh, <laughs> tack ploy we have is uh, Out of the Darkness. I uh, use this tack ploy at the end of the scouting step. One friendly Nemesis Claw operative wholly within your drop zone can perform a free normal move action up to uh, two circle as though it can fly. So it's kind of like a better recon, but for the cost of one CP. Yeah, it's kind of like you can do, of... you can do this along with the recon scout yeah. step. So then you, you got can. two guys getting basically like free dashes ish. Yeah, I mean this team doesn't have a lot of blast if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually they have a little bit of blast, but. I don't think they're going to be like alpha striking a lot, but no. it is worth noting that you can take like infiltrate mm -hmm. and then do out of the darkness. That way you're still getting a four inch. You can set up an alpha with a concealed guy. Normally, if you want to set up an alpha with recon dash, they're going to have to be engaged, which means your opponent has a little bit of like counterplay to it. Uh, here, though, that's pretty interesting. 
Um, and maybe it just helps you get to an objective. I don't know, but I like it. Uh, next up, Death to the False Emperor for one command point. This is fluffy, but it's actually not bad. So use this tactical ploy after rolling attack dice for a combat involving uh, or shooting attack made by a friendly Nemesis Claw operative. If the enemy operative in that combat or shooting attack has the Imperium keyword, a lot of teams do, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> yeah. and the roll attack dice step of that combat or shooting attack, you can reroll any or all of your attack dice results of one result. So like Cult Ambush. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it has the Adeptus Astartes keyword, you get relentless, basically. Uh, so what's oh nice boy. about this, first of all, is you get to do it after you see the roll, so before you would re-roll. So you never have to, you know, tactical re-roll if this is available to you, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you would tactical re-roll if there's only one result you want to re-roll, like one dice. But um, this is reactive it works against a lot of teams works against most teams not most teams probably about half the teams um and you don't need to use it unless you need it and the other part that i kind of like about it is that if you're playing a team that isn't imperium that's just one less cp that you got to worry about spending that's vox yes. screen baby yeah <laughs> so, there you go more vox screen money please uh, but in all seriousness, it is actually a decent. It's a it's a fine ploy. Actually, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. just like a fluffy meme. If if it comes into play, I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, so last here for the tactical ploys, we have proclivity for murder. Uh, use this tact ploy after a friendly nemesis claw operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range. That friendly operative can immediately perform a free charge action up to three, or a free dash action. Uh, even if it has performed an action during that activation that prevents it from performing the charge or dash actions. So, Shane, you really like the the free uh, three-inch charge, right? Yeah, because this is... So, I played a lot of Legionary. I messed around with corn. I always... You know, I, I like Perpetual Aggression, the corn ploy, which is basically this in a strategic ploy. But I like it a lot more as a tactical ploy because you use it only when you need it because i had a lot of instances with with perpetual aggression where i would use it ahead of time and you know it ne it wouldn't necessarily come up because my opponent would space out after they see that i took it or something with proclivity for murder you just do it when it comes up and honestly with i never really ran full corn to be fair but i wasn't running into situations a lot where i was seeing multiple avenues of perpetual aggression per turn so this is also similar to the Felgor ploy where they can charge three inches after killing something. And that ploy is like, that can go off and just like win a game. Yeah. And unlike Felgor, a lot of pretty much, you can effectively have it so that all of your Night Lords are fighting twice if you have Nightmare Manifest online. Um, so you can set up like a charge fight, three inch charge afterwards, fight again and do another guy. Oh. Um, or a charge fight, you know, dash forward in pistol range of, of another guy and shoot, or charge fight, dash out of line of sight so that you can't get punished after charge fighting. Yeah. Um, I think those are all worth CP. So that's this is a really really good tactical play. Mm -hmm. So I mean, honestly, amazing tech plays here. All four of these are really good. So I think equipment now you yep. can look at. So uh, this team, I love their equipment, Ryan. Why yeah. don't you start? Sure. So we've got, it's Night Lords, so of course we have some flayed skin for two equipment points. Uh, while this operative is visible to and within three of an enemy operative, your opponent cannot reroll attack or defense dice for that enemy operative. So good. I'm taking three of these every game, yeah. I think. Uh, yep. It's going to be tough not to. Two to three, I think. Yep. Like... And you can't give it to the guy who has the Grizzly Trophy, for what it's worth. Um, but that's okay, but like, because he has a Grizzly Trophy. Like, you already have a guy that has a minus one to, to hit aura, three inches. You have a guy that is minus one damage in combat. You have your leader, who basically has just a scratch once per turn. Um, any one of those guys can take Flayed Skin and be basically impossible to kill in one shot. Um, keep in mind, you're never getting shot with a Melta, probably, <laughs> because of... Fox Scream, so most teams only have so many things that can kill you, 
let alone minus one to hit, let alone with no rerolls. Yeah. So yeah. Blade skin's good. Yeah. Uh, uh next up, Ryan, we got my favorite. Mm-hmm. The Grizzly Trophy. So you're gonna take it every game. Uh you can't take it on the guy with the blade skin, like I said. I don't know which guy you give it to yet. I've looked at these models a bunch of times. I know it's either the the leader, the skin thief, or this creature. I just don't know which one yet. <laughs> um my my intuition says I want to give the screecher flayed skin so that they're minus one to hit and they can't reroll. So I don't give the 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 screecher grizzly trophy. I think you would maybe give man probably the the skin thief minus one to hit minus one attack dice. Yeah, and um, he has the damage reduction built into him, right? So or yeah, just yeah, not minus in- one to hit. Minus one damage, minus one attack dice is what I meant to say. Got you. Um, but yeah, like I, either way, you're going to take the Grizzly Trophy somewhere. I mean, you could hypothetically put it on the leader, and then when they come close, then one of their attack dice is going to get discarded with just a scratch, and they're automatically rolling one less. So it's like, if they have four dice, like they can only maximum hit you with two before you even roll defense dice. Yeah, because of the prescience token, right? Yeah, so that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, chain snare, I don't really like it here. Things should not be in engagement range with you often, mm-hmm. unless they're dead afterwards. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then the like the uh, bigger things that can survive a combat with you, the chain snares are going to do anything against them anyway. So yeah, because they're not going to fall back. Mm-hmm. Anything that's going to be trying, like they're going to be in combat with you, is either going to be dead before it gets a chance to do this, or if it's alive, yeah, it'll fight you. Uh, suspenser system. So Ryan, suspenser system's good. I've played it a lot with Legionary, but I think that you just don't take the heavy gunner with this team a yeah. lot. So you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, just and leave I it think at home. If you do take the heavy gunner, sure. I guess try to budget it. It's going to be tough with Flade Skin and Grizzly Trophy, though. I guess you could go double Flade Skin, Grizzly Trophy, suspenser system. That's probably an interesting build if you took that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a 1 EP combat blade, which is unfortunately worse than Malefic Blade the Legionary gets. It's the same thing, but it has 4 attacks instead of 5. On 3s, three, 3-5. Three, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's okay. Um, it's just to... fists with one more crit damage. Yeah. And then they've got uh, frag and crack grenades. So... The, it's going to be tough choosing between... So you can go triple flayed skin and a grizzly trophy, or you can go double flayed skin... Grizzly Trophy, Crack Grenade. I think that's going to yeah. be common with this team. Probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, either way, this no shortage of excellent equipment here. This team is not Nurgle necessarily, but they are quite hard to kill. Mm-hmm. Which is what you want. Mm-hmm. So, um, Ryan, do you want to take us to the Tac Ops? Yes. Let's take a look. So for TAC Ops, uh, Faction TAC Op 1, we have So Terror. If a friendly Nemesis Claw operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range and that enemy operative is within circle of an objective marker that is both in your opponent's territory and not on the center line, you score 1 VP. And if you achieve the first condition in any subsequent turning point, you score 1. Uh... There's a there's a um, lot of prerequisites that have to be checked in order to score this, so I'm automatically not. I don't love it. Yeah, I don't love it either. I, I don't. I don't route. like it. Yeah, it's th- just yeah, worse that's route. true. Yeah, yeah, because at least okay. that way you're not yeah. tied to an objective. You know. Yeah, like I suppose it's like technically it can be theoretically easier than route sometimes once in a while, but I think route is just almost always going to be easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. I don't what like you it. T- what if you, you took this with route? Uh, I mean, so I mean, you're probably taking Robin Ransack with this team. I yes. guess you could take this with route, but um, I don't like it. Uh, Dread Tail Dark Rumor Faction Tech Op 2. You reveal it at the end of the battle, which is immediately good. I like things like that. So if a friendly Nemesis Claw operative is within six of your opponent's kill zone edge, you score a victory point. And then if another friendly a nemesis call operative is within six of an enemy operative you score one victory point 
I think that's really easy. Like, maybe you'll table your opponent and you can't do this, but, like, you've won anyway, right? Yeah, if you've tabled point. your opponent, you're winning anyway. You're right. And if you can't score either of these, you've probably already lost. Um, so I think this might be good. It's not going to be like, you probably won't max it all the time, but um, it's hidden info, and your opponent doesn't necessarily have a total, um, like a ton of control on it. I don't know. I really like this a lot. I think that's, this is pretty decent. All right. Uh, lastly, we have Hunt the Weak. Uh, if a friendly Nemesis Claw operative incapacitates an enemy operative within its engagement range that has an unmodified wounds characteristic of 7, and that enemy operative is more than 6 from all other enemy operatives, you score 1. And then if you achieve the first condition in any subsequent turning points, you score 1. So, I guess you um... take this against, like, Vet Guard and Blooded, and I guess... Even even so, with I, like teams, more than six, yeah. yeah, that's tough, right? With like te- at least early on in the game, with uh, teams that have seven wounds, they have they tend to be they tend to have a higher model count for their teams. So, I I don't think this one's that good. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it, like it might be. I have no idea. This one's really hard to tell if it's good without playing it. Um, because, like, you know... Wait, hold on. Is it... Okay, yeah, so the enemy operative needs to be more than six from all other enemy operatives. It's not yes. you. So you don't really necessarily have control over that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't love it. I think I like Dreadtail Dark Rumor more. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, really, when I think about this, I think this just needs to be better than... Um, eliminate guards, like because I'm gonna take Robin ransack, and I'll probably take her out a lot of the time. So like, does it feel better than eliminate guards to me? I think Dreadtail Dark Rumor does sometimes, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, Hunt the Week, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Um. Also, you straight up like can't use this against like elite teams. Oh yeah, obviously <laughs> against yeah, most teams. So it's, it's like. Just not it's niche on top of being arguably worse than some other options that you have access to. Yeah. For what it's worth, they do have access to recon. Now, a lot of people like recon. I don't think I would take recon with this team as much as I love recover item. Yeah. I think you just want to be playing to kill the opponent Mm -hmm. um, because it's natural and it's what you're doing anyway. Um, Kind of like my theory with, with higher attack where I just think a team with this much APL just wants to be using it all for board state and attrition. And then you just score at the end of the game. Uh, I would probably just go seek and destroy and pair it with um, dread tail, dark rumor, because you can score that at the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, Some teams like every guy is really dangerous, like another elite team. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe don't take that there. Because, you know, being within, if you're going out of your way to stay within six inches of like an intercession model, it might just kill you <laughs> if you yeah. don't kill it. So this is probably better against hordes, I guess. Um, and if you're playing against like an intercession or an elite team, you can go like assassinate target or something and just focus on killing everything. Any final thoughts, Ryan? How, do we want to grade this team now? Sure, I'll, I'll grade this team. So I'll, not in terms of how much you like them, uh, but how good you think okay. they are. I we think, all know you love them. I think... Um, so, I think they're A, at least. Okay. I, I can't put them in S tier, just because they're an elite team. But they're so hard to kill from all their tricks, Shane. I kind of want to. I think they might be S tier. Yeah. I think So, I think this is far and away, by far, right now, the best... Um, the best uh, elite team in mm-hmm. the game on release. Mm-hmm. They are so much better than Legionary, I think, just based on Box Scream and like some of the other tricks that they have. Yeah. Um, there are certain things that elites do, or that Legionaries do a little bit better, but I don't think it makes up for all these amazing tech plays that this team has, and like the extra CP and the prescience stuff. Um, 
It just feels really, really strong. Um, I mean, we just saw a lot of meta teams get nerfed, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that this team is good enough to be S tier. I know people hate elites. I understand. I just think that this team solves a lot of the elite problems better than most teams. Yeah. So maybe S tier. Definitely A tier, at least. High A tier. I would put them there, but I don't even know what S tier looks like right now with, with after the data slate. So Yeah, sounds like we'll um, have to do a tier list video soon and figure that out. Yeah, you're right. And the meta is wide open. It and is. I think Nemesis Claw is absolutely primed to be very, very good. So mm -hmm. I guess that pretty much wraps up our review for the Nemesis Claw kill team. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, if you like what Shane and I are doing and you want to support us a little bit, you can go ahead and check out our Patreon, where Shane actually has been uploading some uh, Patreon ex or patron-exclusive content for the higher tiers uh, over there. Uh, you can also check out our Discord channel down below. I think we are the largest yes. kill team-specific Discord in the world right now. So very cool. Make sure that you get in there, continue the conversation with us there, and uh, talk and play Kill Team over TTS, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the video so you don't miss out on any of our future Kill Team content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.